Alright guys, this is Will from Monkey Steals Peach here. So in the last video I talked about my main style which is Taiji Mantis and explained the history and the features of the style, what it's all about. For today's video I want to talk about Hal Family Mantis which my teacher teaches as a kind of secondary or supplementary style alongside the main art uh, which we focus on of Taiji Mantis. So Hal Family Mantis has uh, some unique features which I'll get into in the video. But before I go into that um, just want to say very quickly, uh, I know I mentioned it in the last video, but if you haven't already watched, I've recently released a documentary called Shaolin Heritage, um, which is all about my journey to Dungfeng to interview the masters around the villages surrounding Shaolin Temple and look at the old style of Shaolin. And also recently I've been uploading and I'm going to continue uploading quite a lot of uh, extra content to Patreon and also to the YouTube membership. So if you're interested in that, you can um, sign up to either of those to get access to that extra content. So Hao Lian Ru was the founder and creator of the Hao Family Mantis, and he came from uh, Miaoho Tun, Miaoho Village, which is in Muping County, just outside the city of Yantai. And he trained his mantis either with Liang Xuexiang or Liang Jinchuan. Uh, it's a bit of a contentious issue who his teacher was, and there are sources that say he trained under both people. Um, to be honest, I don't think it really makes a huge amount of difference. Um, father and son were both very uh, skilled practitioners, very influential people in the history of mantis, so I suppose it's equally prestigious to have trained under either of them. Um, but anyway, that issue aside, um, I'll talk a little bit about uh, who Hao Lian Ru was. So Hao Lian Ru previously had studied uh, Shaolin Luohan Quan, um, Monkey Fist, and a style called Hui Huan Man, which he learned from his wife, who came from Tangzhou in Hebei province. And Hui Huan Man uh, was a style that used a lot of uh, very close uh, very closely knit hand hand methods, and it was it was used by women who would have these artificially extended um, kind of long nails, and so it would use these hand methods like clawing, grabbing, poking, and thrusting with them. So he'd also learnt that, which would then influence his uh, iron palm methods that he was also very famous for. So having already mastered these styles, he went to Beijing to do some business, and he opened a shop, I think he was trading in, in cloth or something like that. And while he was living in Beijing, he met Liang Jingchuan, who I've just mentioned. And because, you know, he was from Yantai, Liang Jingchuan was from uh, Haiyang, which is very close to Yantai, and they're both martial artists, they became very good friends and spent a lot of time exchanging and training together. Um, this is kind of where the sources differ. Some say that he purely learned from Liang Jingchuan, um, others say that he just became friends with him and had exchanges, but then when he moved back to Yantai, he went to uh, spend some time with Liang Jingchuan's father, Liang Shang, and, and studied directly under him. Um, either way, he learnt Mantis from, from um, one of the two, and he then incorporated all of these styles together to create a unique system, which became known as the Hao family system. Uh, and, and that was because he had six sons, um, who were his inheritors, and they were uh, became very famous in Yantai. They all opened, I, th I think, three out of the six open schools and, and took on quite a lot of students. Uh, so they, the Hao family developed quite a strong reputation. So of Hao Lian Ru's six sons, the sixth and youngest son um, was shot dead when heckling the communist troops when they first arrived into the city of Yantai. Um, so there's, there's not too much known about him. Uh, the fifth son, Hao Hongpo, was uh, nicknamed the monkey and because he was very, very agile and a very quick fighter. And he had one student called Zhang Wanfu who was particularly influential. Zhang Wanfu later migrated to Europe and has a lot of students in Germany and Hungary and a few other European nations. Um, the fourth son, uh, Hao Hengxin, was nicknamed Hao Biaozi, means kind of something like Hao the crazy guy. Uh, because he was a very, very eccentric character. Um, he was a devout Buddhist and vegan, and uh, while uh, his students were training, he would often sit in the corner and recite sutras. 
and um, he had a lot of personality quirks like uh, in the winter he would often go like running around Yentai uh, in his underwear and he'd often be seen swimming in the sea in the middle of winter so he had some quite strange practices like that um, and he was also probably the most famous out of all of them for his iron palm um, he was very very skilled with his hands very fast and powerful hands um, the third and first sons um, I don't know too much about, and I, I don't think they actually um, practiced or taught martial arts. And then the second son was probably the most famous, uh, Hao Hung Lu. He was nicknamed Hao Lao Dao, which means like the old Taoist Hao, because he often used to wear um, Taoist robes. And he was very, very famous for uh, creating the Mantis double-handed sword, which has become kind of a characteristic of Mantis nowadays, regardless of what lineage or branch of practicing, a lot of people have adopted it, but it was actually him that created the method. Um, the specific uh, form that he created was called Damo Jian, or Bodied Armor Sword. And it's interesting because he took the methods of his father's spear, um, his, his father, Haolin Ru, uh, that I mentioned before, was also very famous for his spear, besides the other styles I mentioned. So he took his father's spear methods and um, use them to influence the uh, bodied armor sword, that he, the double-handed sword that he came up with. And that was based upon 12 principles, which were directly taken from uh, the spear methods. And Hao Hung Lu's son, Hao Bin, was probably the most famous Hao family practitioner, and he's credited with uh, spreading the art um, far and wide. And it's, as I said at the beginning, it's his descendants um, who have spread the art overseas. Now, Hao Bin actually trained with a lot of other teachers besides his own father. Um, notably, he notably spent, I think it was about five years, training with Ji Chun Ting, who's from my main lineage of Taiji Mantis. And so he incorporated a lot of um, other methods and other material into what he was teaching. And he really developed the art into something, something unique. Um, and it's actually, uh, well, his father, Hao Hong Lu, but mostly him, popularized the art under the name Taiji Mei Hua Mantis, rather than the older name, which was just Hao Family Mantis. Now, my teacher's teacher, Zhang Kai Tang, before he learned Taiji Mantis, he spent six years learning under the fourth son, Hao Hong Xin, and he, he learned the entire system from him. And then he also spent some time learning the weapons methods from the second son, Hao Hong Lu. So, um, within our lineage, we've preserved a lot of the older methods of the Hao family, which you don't really see so much nowadays. And that's not to say that like the, these old methods are better or Hao Bin's methods were better. It's just it's just that they're two different approaches. And, and at least from a historical point of view, it's kind of interesting to see the methods that my teacher does because they're kind of like a time capsule um, in that you can you can look into the methods of the past. And so the curriculum of Hao Hung Xin that he passed on to Zhang Kai Tang, my teacher's teacher, uh, began with a form called uh, Luo Han Quan, which is a very, very simple form that builds uh, strong fundamentals and it, it does have quite a strong Shaolin flavor to it. And then there's uh, Luan Jie, the mother form, um, basically the same as what we do in Taiji Mantis. There's some slight variation in movements and flavor. And then there was uh, Tai Ji P, which is uh, divided into part one and part two. And Tai Ji P is focused a lot on, um, the word P means to chop or to cleave. So it's focused a lot on chopping, cleaving, uh, slapping, thrusting. It's a lot of open-handed techniques. It really comes out of the iron palm methods that I mentioned earlier. And then the kind of creme de la creme, or the, the, the real core of the Hao family methods, are a group of forms called Tranzhi, so that's uh, divided into four forms. Tranzhi means to pass through the branches, and this takes the elements of all of the previous knowledge that uh, Hao Lian Ru had, so the Shaolin Luo Han Quan, the, the, the monkey, the Hui Hua Man, and mixes all of those elements into the mantis um, to create a very interesting system and it uses a lot of very agile and fast footwork kind of leaping and hopping from side to side a lot of uh, evasion as, as well as uh, running straight into the opponent 
and um, a lot of very intricate handwork. And I think it really encapsulates the flavour of the old Hao family methods. Um, and I think you can really use this set of forms to summarise what the old fam Hao family methods were and then contrast them to the main style I practice, which is Taiji Mantis. And so Tranja really kind of encapsulates what makes Hao family methods unique. And by looking at this set of forms, we can see how it's different to Taiji Mantis in that it uses um, less kind of swaying of the body, less, uh, you're, th you're not throwing your weight into the techniques as much as you do with Taiji Mantis. Um, there's less sort of, there's less takedowns, less like grappling close quarters aspect. Um, as I said, more agile footwork, more sort of intricate handwork, a lot of trapping combinations, open-handed methods, and that you're kind of threading the hands quite a lot. And so on the whole, it does take a different, although the principles are mantis and it's essentially the same system, it does take a slightly different approach to fighting than the taiji mantis does. So yeah, that pretty much sums up uh, how family. I think I tried to cover just about everything there. Um, as always, thank you very much for watching the channel. Thank you for watching the videos. Uh, if you'd like to support the running of the channel, as I said at the beginning, you can go to patreon.com slash monkeystealspeach. Uh, you can also become a YouTube member. There's lots of extra content. You can grab yourself a t-shirt or hoodie as well. Um, you can get that from the merch shelf below, or you can also go to the shop on my website. Um, and make sure you check out the Shaolin uh, Heritage documentary as well. And yeah, as always, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.